Hi, welcome back to my channel. Today we will be looking at a, a composition by Kasparian in 1946, if I'm not mistaken. So first things first, I would recommend you to pause the video and try to see what you would play in this position. Um, okay. So, uh, of course, uh, it's very funny that uh, everything in the white position defends itself because we're going to h7 defends h5, h5 defends g6, g6 defends h7. Uh, however, uh, the problem is that the rook is uh, quite uh, passive on this h7 square. Ideally, uh, white would like to activate the rook with a move like you know rook c7 and put the rook on c5 to defend the h5 pawn. The problem is that on the move rook c7, for example, then there's the move rook to g5, and on the move h6, g6 hangs, of course. Uh, and that's why black's idea is just to wait rook g3, rook h3, just to put pressure on the g6 and h5 pawns. Uh, however, if the rook moves away from one of these squares, uh, then this rook could actually reach the fifth rank. You will see what I mean. Uh, first things first, though, I mean, Right now the rook is paralyzed on h7. It cannot, in any of its moves uh, make no progress. Pawns cannot move, so, uh, and the king is very badly placed on a1, so I might as well make a move like king to b2 in this position, just to activate the king. Uh, and uh, now let's say that black were to make a move like rook to e3 in this position. Then white would make the move rook to b7. And the problem is that on the on a move like rook to e5, there's this move h6. Now rook b8 is a threat, and with these two pawns in the sixth rank, white is going to win this. I mean, the rook will be just too passive defending the eighth rank. The white king will just come in and win the game. Then, um, however, um, if the rook were to go back on to h3 to put pressure on the pawn like this to play against uh, play against the move. Um, h6 then white's rook will come to b5 and it will defend uh the h5 pawn and now uh white has made some progress it's very difficult to, uh, to actually tell if the, uh, if the if this rook endgame is winning but you know white's goal at least is to make at least try to find a way to make some progress so uh and that is why uh in this position of course, uh, rook h3 is the best move because now the rook cannot uh, move away from the h7 square. Okay, white continues on with his plan, king c2, rook g3, king d2, rook h3, king e2, rook g3, king f2, rook h3, and king to g2. So now it looks like white has, um, white has uh, kicked the rook away from these squares. However, uh, black has this move rook a3, and it's very unfortunate because the move rook b7, black gets this move rook to a5. And, and the problem is that uh, white's threat was h6, but if the move h6 is played here, the move rook to g5 check is played, and then you pick up the g6 pawn. Otherwise, rook to be the rook to threat of rook b is going to be just too strong, and blacks are going to be losing there. So rook h7 is the only move. But after the move rook to a3, basically, uh, we get the same position. Black has has stopped white from making progress, and this position is actually a draw. I mean, white has some tricks, but if black plays correctly, it's a draw. Okay, so that is why um, uh, that is. Uh, it's unfortunate that if the white, if white were to kick away the rook from those g three and h three squares, that um, uh, by the move king to g two, that there's this trick of rook to g five will happen. So that's why uh, we have to look for other ways to kick away the rook. So uh, if you want, you can pause the video again with that information. But uh, the uh, thing is that this position here is actually, uh, uh, if it were black to move, it would be tsuk -tsuk. This is actually mutual tsuk -tsuk. So if it were black to move, for example, the rook would go, the same variation would happen. But with the king on f2, the move rook g5 would not come with a check, and rook b would be checkmate. So uh, basically, if in this position, if the move rook to g5 were played with the king on f2, rook b would be winning. So that's why um, white needs to get this position with black's move. 
And the way how white gets it is with this move king to a2 in this position. Because now once the king runs over here, we have this position and now it's took swung. So after the black move, rook moves away, rook to d7 comes in and uh, black's just totally losing. So rook h3 can be tried, but then the rook can come to the fifth rank. And then this type of thing just wins the game. And then the king will hide on h6 from all the checks and it's winning. I mean, so that's why um, that is the way how uh, white would win this position. Now, uh, black can put up some resistance uh, with this move, uh, uh, rook to d3. Uh, but now uh, white has already made some progress. Rook, the rook comes to b7. The rook comes back to h3, but now the rook comes to b5, and now the pawn is defended, and the rook is more active on the fifth ring. It's not like stuck on one square on h7. So king to g7, rook to g5. And uh, this position is, it's a, is also quite unfortunate for black because the rook is kind of stuck on the h file. Because on the move uh, rook to d3, white can make this move h6 and king h6, g7. And um, black can't stop promotion. So uh, king takes g5 and g8 queen. And as we all know, queen versus rook is winning. So that... Uh, that is why rook d3 leads to an easy win by white. But um, uh, black can also try this defensive move, king g8, but just to wait. But then the king will just come to this uh, to this side of the board. Uh, and now the rook can activate. I mean, it's nice that the king is on f2 because uh, rook g3 putting pressure on the pawns is not going to be possible in some lines. And... Um, uh, that is why um, the best way to defend really is just to wait uh, with the rook on the h file like, to play against the move h6. But then the king comes in and black starts giving checks. And um, it's nice because now white can build a bridge against these checks, kind of like, like in the uh, Lucina position. And it's very nice that uh, you can build a bridge on the d file because sometimes uh, this king can go to the e file and if black tries to check from this side over here uh, from on the A file, for example, then the rook can interpose on the D file. So that is why uh, black is now totally losing. Uh, King E7, I mean, black can try a few moves. He can try um, this move, rook one check, but then white can make a move king to D8 with the idea of being to use the D7 square for the rook. And yeah, of course, when white sets, sets up this construction with the uh, pawns on the sixth rank, then black has no chance. Uh, maybe white can try a move like rook h1, but king d8 is played anyway. Rook d7 is just always a threat, and he always on the move king h6, there's the moves like rook h7, so uh, something like this wins. Uh, king e7 is a nice move because rook takes h5 and King F6. I think I'm giving pretty good sample variations for the type of uh, ways, types of ways uh, uh, that White can win this position. So Rook A6. And by the way, I'm using uh, Kasparian's uh, analysis. I mean, some of it's my own analysis, but for the most part, it, it is his. I think he gave this move Rook A6, and um, White has this very good move Rook to D7. So the King is now going to move with a check. So. Um, the rook b6 was given as a move, and then white can win this in a uh, in this nice way with playing with king to d8, and on the move king h8, um, white can make this move king c7. The idea being that on the move rook e6, there's the move rook to d6, and rook e7 check, there's the move king c6. The point being that uh, uh, now white will control the sixth rank and the move h6 will come in with those two pawns in the sixth rank. I mean, black has no chance. And uh, it's unfortunate. The king on the to move king to g7, uh, it looks as though black has stopped white's plans of playing the move uh, h6, but now rook to d7 just exchanges the rooks. So black can also try a move like rook c6 in this position. The idea is to, after the move king to d8, king g8 or something, there's no move king c7. But white can make a move like rook to e7 and kind of try to play for the same ideas. I mean, uh, black is just totally losing. One way or another, white is going to uh, um, white is going to creep uh, creep in with uh, 
uh, with his uh, pawn and his rook. God, that sounded weird. Never mind. Uh, one way or another, the pawn is going to go to uh, the sixth rank, and then rook to e8 is going to be uh, just such a big threat. Um, I just have this as a sample variation. I mean, there's just too many threats. So, yeah, um, that is uh, Kasparian's uh, 1946 etude. Uh, he gave a very interesting move, king a2, of course, that wins the game. It's very interesting. I mean, the king wants to come back, but he has this very precise move, king a2. So if you have any other etudes that you would suggest me to show on my channel, please leave this in the comments. Uh, thanks.